All right, this is J. Bade Ross, show number 183, and this is Wednesday, October, not Wednesday, Tuesday, October 4th. Fall is here, Tim. Fall is here. Yes, it is. I am so excited for the cool weather, especially down here in this basement oven that, you know, once get these computers <laughs> cranking. Uh, and tonight we have a great guest. I'm looking forward to talking to Jordan Yantz. Yep. Ah, said it right. Yes. Got it. <laughs> to Jordan. <laughs> uh, before we talk to Jordan, I wanted to go over a couple of things and we'll head right into to the main event. And that is don't forget to download our app, the JPEG to Raw app, both in the Google Play Store and the, um, what, it, what do you call it? iTunes. In iTunes. Get that. You get the YouTube video, you get the audio, and you get the different playlists. Like AD Wheeler and I have started a new show that we do once a month called mm -hmm. a photo review show, uh, JPEG Raw Photo Review, where we go over some of the photos that were entered into the photo contest each month. And he gives some great feedback. AD, it's is been fun to watch him work. Um, he knows so much more than me. And he <laughs> has started a vlog, a weekly vlog, a daily, maybe it was daily. And I was watching it today. I won't, I won't show it to you here because I don't think, Tim and Jordan could hear it. Chat could hear it. But go over to his YouTube channel, watch that. He went out with his buddy to take some photos and had his drone that he was going to take some drone shots of the, of the abandoned scape that they were going to be shooting. And what, you know what they ran into, Tim? A, a Star Wars reenactment. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> up there in New See, York. That's cool. Up there in New York. And apparently it's on some road that road that has got like graffiti. The whole road is graffiti. So maybe you've heard of this place. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but he ran into a Star Wars reenactment and videotaped it from his drone. So it's, it's incredible, um, to watch. So go check that out on his YouTube page. I think you just search for AD Wheeler over on YouTube and then be sure to catch our once a month photo review show. Um, we go live on Facebook. So just watch our, our Facebook page for the live, um, you know, show or catch it on YouTube later on. All right, I so will have to check that out. Yeah, yeah, check that out. All right, so tonight we have Jordan. Uh, I came across Jordan's. Web, I think I came across your YouTube channel first, Jordan. Uh, oh, okay, I was watching good. some of you. You have a lot of content over there. I was watching some of your content. And I said Jordan's a guy we got to get on the show over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jordan, won't you tell us a little bit about um, yourself and how you got into photography? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Jordan Yance. Uh, I pronounce, you can pronounce it Yance or Yance. It doesn't matter. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I got into photography. Uh, it's actually kind of a, uh, kind of a quirky, funny story. Um, but I, when I first got into photography, I wanted a camera that could quote unquote, have a blurry background. Mm. Um, and so, so my, my first camera that I bought just by doing like a CNET, uh, review thing was, uh, was a Sony a 200. Um, and that's just because I thought it could do a blurry background. And so I quickly learned that you have to do more than just buy a camera <laughs> to, uh, to get a blurry background. So I, I played with that one for probably a couple, a couple years maybe. And then, uh, and then I decided to, um, get a, a different camera that could do video. And the only one in my price range at that time was, uh, a Canon T2i. Uh, and I wanted to get that one cause it did video. And, uh, so that's the camera I've, I've had for a very, very long time or I had for a very long time. Uh, it was probably close to five or six years and just trying to, to learn about, you know, photography with that camera. Um, a couple of years ago, I believe about two years ago, I, uh, I got a Canon 60 and, uh, that's kind of what I've been doing ever since. And, and the, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to, to, to do with photography is just make a camera, uh, make a photo that had a blurry background. That's really my, my, was my goal. <laughs> and so it's quickly evolved from, from doing just that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've always liked photography. I've always, you know, I, I had a, one of those old Olympus point and shoots way back in the day when you use four double a batteries and you, you probably can rattle off about five shots before you had to change the battery again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would, you know, play with that a little bit. And it was, I think it was a power shot. That's what it was. Maybe, um, oh, that's a Canon actually. Uh, anyway, I had one of those kind of point and shoots and just taking random pictures of stuff. Um, and that was, that's kind of where I got started in it. So it was, it was pretty simple, simple beginnings. And we're, we're streaming some of your photos here. Uh, we were a second ago and then there's some behind me. 
And a lot mm -hmm. of them I see in are, are real estate photos. Um, how did yeah. you get into the real estate side of, of photography? Well, I, I first started out in landscape just be, mainly because that's that's like the most accessible ways of photography is landscape because you really don't need much for that. Um, and then I saw um, probably a year and a half ago to two years ago, right around the time I got my 6D, was uh, was I saw Mike Kelly, uh, who's the uh, you know popular real estate photographer, architectural photographer. I saw his images and I was just blown away by those types of images. Um, and, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of thought to myself, Hey, you know, I could still do landscape stuff on the side, but if I could shoot one other thing, what would it be? And that would probably be real estate. I'd, I'm not really big into shooting people or anything like that. So, um, I mean, I've done a couple weddings here and there and it's just, it's, it's just not what I have fun with. Yeah. And so, uh, so I, I started in real estate and it kind of, you know, slow a little bit. Um, what did happen, what did help with that though? was my, you know, n normal nine to five job was, uh, is a graphic designer, but I also have access to apartment buildings cause that's the industry I'm in. And they have these, uh, furnished models that are, um, you know, ready to have photos taken. And then the, uh, the company actually needs photos taken. So I volunteer my services to go out there and, and, and take photos just so I can use them for, for my portfolio. And then that's what kind of got my portfolio started. And, uh, now I'm getting, uh, getting clients. So that's kind of how that, that came wow. about. I, I, it really just started with Mike Kelly. That's basically yeah. what it started out with. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I know you mentioned this, but if we can head back, cause I know that everybody, the common question everybody asks, what, what gear do you shoot with and what software do you use to edit? Uh, well, I mean, I, I shoot with the, you know, Canon 60 and I have all my, I don't know if you want to roll through the lenses or anything like that N now, but you're like, you're number, <laughs> you're number one and number two. Uh, well, mainly it's just, uh, my, my wide angle, I have a 17 to 40 and that's kind of what I use for all my real estate. Mainly that thing never leaves the camera. I yeah. always keep that one on, um, except if I'm doing, you know, you know, just general stuff where I need to zoom in a little bit, but, um, but that pretty much never leaves my camera. I've always liked the the wide angle of view of a of a wide angle, so I've I've always kept that on there. Um, and, Is the sixty uh, a, a full frame? Sixty, yeah, it's okay. full frame. Um, and that's the reason I got it is because I, I was going between at that time the the uh, uh, Mark III and the uh, Canon six D. Doing a little bit of research, you know, they both have the same sensor and all that kind of stuff. And the the sixty is cheaper, so I went with that. Yeah. Um, but then I, I I mainly use Lightroom to do all of my edits, um, and then I kind of have a different sort of process when it comes to especially the real estate stuff. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put in put my photos in Lightroom, and I'll uh, you know do a couple general edits, rough edits, just enough that I know that the client will you know, it'll be suitable for the client. Right. And then I could, I'll take weeks just editing one image, trying to, trying to get it perfect in my eyes. Um, and then, uh, and then I'll, I'll eventually send those images to, to the client again and say, Hey, here, here's our, some advanced retouched images that you might enjoy if you, uh, if you still have the property for sale or something like that. And so, I, I mean, I, I, I could spend, I could spend, spend probably one to two weeks on just editing one image, just wow. trying to trying to make it somewhat perfect, you yeah. know. Um, and most and of that you said is in Lightroom. Uh, most of the general edits and stuff is in Lightroom, but I'll 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 round trip over to to uh, Photoshop to do a lot of other advanced stuff. Okay. Um, Any so that's kind um, of, HDR program or anything? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I, I I started that back when it was a, a you know a craze. Um, but I don't do it. Uh, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> okay. Just the, because the cameras are so great, the, oh, yeah. you know, nowadays, I mean, you, you could max out the highlights and the shadows and just have a, basically an HDR image right there. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever rely on that much anymore. I I'm open to trying new stuff, uh, with HDR, but it's just, it, it's, it's not part of my workflow anymore, I guess. Right. Yeah, um, you know, a, a lot of us, like you, we work a full-time job, and, and photography is we either make money on the side or we uh, just do it as a hobby. Where mm -hmm. would you like to see your photography going? Is, it, is this a case where, you know, if the situation is right, you would like to do photography full-time, or you like to set up now where you have a day job and you do this on the side? Uh, most definitely, I like to do it full-time. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, my, that's my end goal, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to that point. Um, 
I, I think it helps out just a tiny bit that I have a graphic design background. Absolutely. So as far as doing art stuff and, and marketing and whatnot, I'm, I'm, I'm okay on that aspect. I'm just to be, to be real with myself, I'm not the best salesman. Mm -hmm. So I need to be a better salesman and, uh, and, and, you know, kind of go more on that route. Uh, but yeah, I definitely would love to, to do full time. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'll shoot, I'll shoot any house. I don't care if it's a double wide. I'll still shoot a house, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, uh, no problem. We're, um, I think it's December 6th. We're going to have, I don't know if you ever saw the show, Greg Benz. He, mm -hmm. I don't know what his job was, but apparently allowed him to travel a whole lot. And he did photography on the side. Well, he just quit and his full-time job and is going to do photography full-time. Because I know nice. that transition from full-time job, especially if, it, if it's a secure job with that you don't literally hate and it's got yeah. decent benefits, leaving that for the unknown of, of, of doing photography and being your own boss, um, you know, it could be scary. That transition I couldn't is even, scary. I couldn't even imagine. I'm, I went my company for 32 years. Uh, I can't imagine getting up and leaving. 27 for me. So, yeah, it's just not something I could do. And, you know, like you, Jordan, I think, you know, you're more skilled than me looking at your photos. So th that you got ahead of me. But also – the sales part of it, it was a struggle for me too. And that's a, you know, that's a critical thing when you're selling yourself and your art to, to be able to learn that. So it's something right. I think that is learnable. It comes yeah. easier for some people than others, but it's something that's learnable. Yeah. I kind of feel, I kind of feel like if I start, if I think I'm starting to be a good salesman, yeah. then I'm starting to be too pushy. <laughs> So I got to, I, I got to find that sweet spot. You know, I got to, I got to find that one area to stick with it. <laughs> I have no um, magic for you there. Cause I just like you, I, I feel the same way. <laughs> there was actually one of my, one of my recent shoots. Um, it was, uh, it was a condo and I went, I went in there and it was, it's a small condo it was I don't remember exactly how much square foot, but it was maybe 1100 square foot. It was a pretty tiny condo. And, uh, I, you know, I have the pricing listed on my website. Usually it's, 150 per shoot. Um, and that's just a rough estimate. It can change. Mm -hmm. And so the guy, I was talking with the guy and, you know, we struck up conversation. I had the photos done and taken in probably about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. And then I just started talking to the guy and he said, um, so, so how much do I owe you? And I said, well, I'll, it'll, judging by the, the size of the apartment and the photos taken, I'll probably charge you a hundred dollars. And so I get back, I edit the photos and I send him an invoice and I said, uh, just thank you for the conversation. I only charged you 80. <laughs> so I, you know, in a business aspect, that's not really the greatest no. move. <laughs> you <laughs> almost, you almost cut it in half. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, but, but we, we, we had a good talk. So I just, <laughs> it was, it was fun, you know, it, that, it, you know, that sounds a lot like what I would do. I, I you, you undervalue yourself. Yeah. You, you know, what's, I don't, let me ask you this. In your day job, your skills mm -hmm. there, do you feel you undervalue your skills there? Uh, I don't I don't feel like I undervalue. I feel like the company does. True. So so I feel kind of the same way in that I feel my skills over there are worth what I'm making or more. Right. And if another company offered me 20% less than what I'm making now and say, you know, forget that, you know, why would I do that? I, yeah. You know, my skills are worth this. So what's odd, and I, I feel like we had the same thought here, is that on the other side, on the photography side, I feel like even if they're willing to pay me $150, maybe I need to give them a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's basically, that's basically how I feel. Yeah. So I don't know what the, what, you know, give you any magic words there, but I, I feel the same way. And then on one side of my life, I, I can put a good value on what I do. On the other side, not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I just see it as, you know, I, I, I lost 20 bucks, but I had a good conversation for 20 minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, I got a good conversation to dollar a minute. <laughs> so <laughs> that's basically how it happened. And, you know, maybe you can look at it this way is you, you never know where that's going to lead you in the future. Maybe it right. leads nowhere. Maybe it leads to, you know, this guy has access to all kinds of other things and he needs, he needs you and he remembers you and it, it opens up this other door. So, um, yeah. And I have, yeah. I have this one agent that contacted me, um, and he looked at my photos and he looked at my pricing and he said, um, your, your pricing is higher than what my, you know, normal guy does. Uh, I guess as no, I think he said his normal guy shoots for him real quick for 50 bucks. 
and then he uh, sends them to get edited by a third party, and then they send them back, and that's another fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. And um, he's it's there. I saw some of them, and I'm not one of those guys that's like, you know, that photo's horrible and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like I do better work. And I said, well, I'm sticking at 150 because that's yeah. my that's my price. Um, and so he, I, I really didn't think he was going to come back and say, you know, can you shoot another house for me or something? Uh, but two weeks later, he called me up and said, hey, I got another house. Can you run out there? And I said, yeah. And then he's, I've gotten five jobs from him, which I didn't think I would get. Wow. any, uh, just because I'm higher than his normal guy. Yeah. What, what is, um, uh, in your area, what is the prices of homes, the general air prices of home, or, or maybe if there's not an average, maybe a floor of homes that they'll will be willing to pay for that, uh, $150 for the photos. Uh, like I said, the, the condo I shot was like one, uh, 1100 square foot and that's a 99, uh, $99,000 okay. condo. And then the one of the largest ones I shot was a, a four four thirty, which is pretty big for the area. Yeah, um, it's a four thirty, and it was you know three thousand or thirty five hundred square feet. Um, and so I haven't done anything outside of that. Um, but the one fifty, based on the research from other agents in the real estate agents in the area or the real estate photographers in the area, is is probably pretty fair. Well, and there's always going to be there's always going to be those guys that you know will shoot a house like I did for eighty, and do that the whole time, um, but right, it's it's pretty fair price. Oh, and from what I've heard, uh, and I'm not an expert at all, but from, that sounds about the price that I've been hearing. And yeah. you know, until I started um, dreaming about my retirement home, which is still years <laughs> away, and you know, looking looking at photos and looking at these things, some of them up in you know the North Carolina area. Um, in the Tennessee area. And then also just looking for like cabins to rent for my wife and I, mm. those photo, the photos that, that are taken there, there's a big difference between the, the, you know, the snapshots that, that whoever yeah. took, I don't know who took them versus the ones that you can tell the professional. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and to me, it, I could be looking at a house that's not nearly as good, but has good photos versus a house that's really nice with bad photos and you're like almost instantly turned off of the bad house. I mean, the bad photo house. Right. Even though it may and be that, a better house. That's what, yeah. that's what me and my wife are going through right now because we're looking for a new home. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll be on Zillow and all that kind of stuff, all the MLS listings. And we'll scroll through the photos. And, and there's actually one house that we both really, really like. Um, but number one, it only has four photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's and, a, and that's odd. <laughs> And that's very odd. Yeah. It only has four photos and it looks like they were, you know, it looks like they were this big blown (laughs) up to that big, you know, it's, (laughs) you know, pixelated and everything. And the description of the house is beautiful. What I can see of the house is beautiful, but there's only four and they're, they're very pixelated. So, well, you you know, I was just thinking about this. You you remember in real estate, you hear about curb appeal and all these things you got to do for curb appeal. I think the photos are the new curb appeal. I would oh, agree. definitely. Because definitely, yeah. Who who in this day is just getting in a car and driving around and wondering if they can find a house? Yeah, I bet you the vast majority. I don't have any stats, but the vast majority of people start their house hunting online. Yeah, and, and yeah, looking at photos. Yeah, definitely. And, I, I we don't we haven't we've gone a couple places, but that's based on photos. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll look first. You know, first, and then if we're if we see a house that we like and we're actually out there. Then we might drive a couple streets just to see if there's a for sale sign out in the front yard. Um, but most of the time we'll find a house and and my wife will jot it down on her phone and then we'll go find that house. But we we always, always look on the photos. And if I see if I see a house that's that's pretty much good online, uh like you were saying, and it has crappy photos, and then I see another one that has good photos, yeah. I'm probably gonna look at that one a whole lot more. Right. Than than the other one. Okay, so I know you do real you do the real estate, and you also do the um uh landscape. Uh if you had your choice, which and you or either one, maybe you know, maybe you can do both. Which one do you enjoy most? It, it, taking money out of the picture. Uh, taking money out of the picture, yeah. it would 
Oh, that's so tough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 4951 split, okay, okay. really. <laughs> it's um, 4951. <laughs> <laughs> it's it really it's really like that. Um but uh but yeah, it, 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 with with my landscape stuff when I go out and shoot, it's normally never by myself. Really? Um yeah, it's it's usually my dad and I are 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 uh kind of what what I call photo buddies. Okay. Um we'll we'll he he takes photos too and we'll We'll sometimes hop in the car, pick a street, and just start going from there to try to find some stuff. Um, obviously, if we go to you know like on a vacation somewhere, we'll we'll hunt for places around there. Um, but uh, but we we normally just you know get in the car and try to find some place to shoot that we haven't shot before, which we're really running out of places because there's only so much many places you can go. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we, I have fun doing that because it's, it's a bonding thing. We get to get out, we get to, sure. you know, uh, just talk. Sometimes we get like one shot that we halfway decent like, uh, but then we have fun at the end because we got to, you know, just hang out and stuff. So, uh, that's, that's the appeal of the landscape stuff and just finding around and hunting. Um, uh, but, uh, but the real estate stuff is the, is the, probably the f- stuff that I have more fun with only because I just, I want to try to make art out of a land, out of a, someone's living room, if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it makes sense. And, you know, I got to imagine that it would be of the two, the real estate would be the easier one. Now we bring money back into the picture, the easier one to make money off of. Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now, when you say like uh, I had a question, you said making yeah. art out of the living room. Do you adjust anything in the uh, in the homes, or do you make suggestions on how to move things around to help sell the house, or do you photo it just the way they have it set up? Uh, normally, I've, I've I've pretty much been somewhat lucky that people will have stagers come in and do stuff and and clean and do all that all that stuff. I've been somewhat lucky with that. If I see something, I'll move it. You know, but I don't really ever. You know, I don't say, hey, you have this couch over here. It would look better if it was this way um, just because I don't want to inconvenience the the owner of the house because most of the time the owners are there when I'm shooting. Oh. Um, so I don't want to inconvenience them. So I will find a different angle or a better angle um, while leaving everything the same. Um, if I'm trying to get like a shot that's very symmetrical or something like that, I'll I'll take the chairs and move them over just to make sure they're lined up perfectly. Um but other than that, I don't. I don't really. I don't really want to to move anything around, especially if some they had someone come and stage it. Right, and that's what the real estate agent should be doing anyway, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You the the guy that I the that I mainly work with. He he always calls me and say, hey, uh, you know, the stagers are there. They they did their thing. Now the cleaners are there. They're doing their thing. And okay. anytime after that, you're ready to go. Very right. Good. They've already set the house up for you. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I did want to ask you, I think I have it up behind me, and I will bring it here into the video. I want to talk a little bit about your landscape photography because you have some, uh-huh. some awesome images in your landscape. Oh, thanks. Starting with, with this one of the tree where yep. the sun is just pouring through there. Um, yep. That one is just gorgeous. I just love it's that beautiful. one. Beautiful. Yes. That one, uh, that was one of those ones where, where I said I spend one to two weeks on an image. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was one of them um, because the the sun was in the perfect spot, but I wanted to Oops. try to embellish the rays a little bit um, and try to get it to a little more stunning than it is or than it was in the original. Um, but I, I I was in the perfect spot just to have that happen. Yeah, I love that one. And you did a blog post not too long ago. Let's see, I'll pull that up here on your um, your main fo- your main photography page of the, this one's found a home. Yep. Yeah. I always try to, you know, when someone buys an image or something like that, I always try to, to, um, to, to make a little blog post about it. Uh, okay. that I think, it, I think that post was actually, I have a friend who owns a, uh, a small little, uh, sushi restaurant. Yeah. And, uh, I told him, you know, he, I said, Hey, do you mind if I hang a couple photos up in your restaurant? Uh, and you know, you get cuts of the photos. Um, and so that was one that was sold there and, and, uh, you know, I'm 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 happy it found a good little home. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like this. I like the shot of this photo, uh, and I like that the bed's not made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the shoes on the floor. I mean, it makes it look it makes it look lived in. And look at that. Make, Who wouldn't want to yeah. have that in their in their house hanging on the wall? That's gorgeous. 
Yeah, I try to if I if I can, I try to make it. You know, I try to I try to give context of how the photo could be placed and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So, so that's uh, that, that's something I try to do. I have a couple more. There's there's actually one that I want to. I'm waiting for another print to sell out of that guy's uh, restaurant or cafe. Um, because I have another one that I want to put up there and I don't know if I have it on my site or not, but it's, uh, it's of a Chicago train. Um, I, I can't remember. That's the only way I know how to describe it really, but I want to put that one up on his, uh, on his cafe. Uh, cause I really like that image. I don't remember the train one. I, it could be, I didn't get it. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just, that's the next one I have slotted for, uh, to go up there. Okay. And, you know, we looked at your Jordan Yachts. Uh, your, this is your main business page, I imagine. Yeah. Where yeah. it has your real estate, it has the pricing, it has a, a blog and all that. But there's a whole mm-hmm. other side to you. Yeah. And that, and <laughs> yeah. that is the Picture Monk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you have a, a separate website with that. And let me see if yeah. I can pull that up here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what is the Picture Monk? Uh, well, a lot of people want to know where the, the name came Thank from. You. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> um, well, it's it's kind of an abstract meaning behind the name, but do you you guys ever watch the show Monk? Yep. Yep. Okay. So that's where I got the the name from the 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 Monk part of it. Picture okay. Monk was just because it's a photo, okay. um, uh, or it's re- photo related. Uh, but the the Monk thing is basically because that guy was all, all OCD and mm-hmm. you know he needed everything to be perfect. Um, and that's the way I feel like I am with my photos is trying to make everything perfect, uh, and, and try to, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll I'll clone out any small thing out of a photo or, uh, you know, anything like that, just try to make it perfect. So it was kind of a fun little play on words. Okay. So in addition to the full-time job and in real estate and landscaping photography, you started Picture Monk, which is. Oh, you know, the website, a podcast, you're doing Lightroom um, uh, presets over there, you're doing blog posts, you're doing mm-hmm. some, some other things that are, that are not a podcast necessarily, but like your Mimic. Yeah. Uh, I was watching one of those the other night. Tell us about yeah. Mimic. What is, what is Mimic? Mimic is a, kind of a, a video series that I'm, I'm ongoing producing, and it's kind of a little – all it is is just finding really cool images that I like online. Yeah. Uh, it could be from, you know, any photographer, even it could even be from a stock site. And I, and I see the way it's edited and I try to edit it exactly the way it is on a photo of, uh, you know, another different photo. And then I usually do it in Lightroom. And then, uh, when, when I get done editing, I just give away the preset of exactly what I did online for away for free. So whoever it wants to download, it can put it in their Lightroom and, and have that same effect. That's a great idea. Yeah, I was watching. I think one on um, a bridge that was going off into the in the fog. Off, yeah, off into the fog. Yeah, and I thought that's a great idea to do that. To here's here's uh, somebody else's shot I really liked, and I'm going to mm-hmm. try and do the same thing with my shot. Yeah, I actually it actually came from uh, it actually came from a visitor of the site. Actually, the the idea not not necessarily that idea, but uh, the one of the visitors of the site sent me a YouTube or no, it was an Instagram uh, Instagram post. Uh, a screenshot of it. And he said, uh, I, I don't know where he was from, but it was kind of broken English. Um, but he was like, I want to know how to edit this way or how to, how to photograph this way or something. Um, and so he, uh, I think it was actually the very first mimic video. Um, but he, uh, he, I, I kind of looked at it and I was like, that's not really something I do. But, <laughs> but, but uh, I, I was playing around with it a couple weeks later. And then I, I, I thought, you know, why don't I just show this guy how to edit a photo like this and I'll just record it and then I'll give away the preset. And then after I did that, uh, people said they really liked the idea of mm-hmm. it. So I just kept on doing it. It's, it's, it's probably, it's probably one of my more fun videos to do just because it's, it's kind of challenging. Yeah. No, it's a great idea. You know, um, sometimes you get feedback from, from people visiting your site or watching your show, doing whatever that is. At first you go, ah, I don't want to do that. And then you do it and yeah. like, oh, this actually works out good. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't. You, you yeah. just you got to pick and choose which ones you're going to do. I do now we're on the site. I want to know what is the five things to do while taking a photo. Oh, you're going to make me do that right offhand, aren't you? <laughs> well, if you, you know, you don't have to remember all five. If you could just give us like two or three. 
<laughs> oh man, I did record that podcast, and now I can't remember what I said. Um, <laughs> we, was, we can come I, back I to that. On a, I kind of went on a rant when I was doing that podcast, <laughs> and I didn't really mean to. Um, and I shouldn't have watched, I watched a Chase Jarvis video right before I recorded the podcast. So I probably shouldn't have watched that video. Um, but, uh, <laughs> we can, we but can come what, back to that if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can, I can okay. say it. Okay. Um, it, it, one of them was, uh, just as simple as looking around and that's kind of why I, uh, that's one of the things I do. And I, like I explained in that particular podcast, most of this stuff happens in like, you know, a second to a millisecond in time. It's, I mean, it's not like I'm doing each individual thing all the time. Um, but, uh, the reason, the reason I actually put that out there is just because I had a, I had another video on YouTube of five things to do, uh, when you're editing. And I actually, that's actually next week's podcast. So breaking news, that's going to be my next week's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but five things to do while you're taking photos is, you know, how do you get to that point where you can edit? And then that's what I recorded that podcast on. So one of the main ones was look around and that's the only reason, uh, that's one of the reasons why I put that on there because one of my last real estate shoots or most recent ones, I thought I had a killer shot, uh, just kind of waiting to photograph this, this condo in particular. Uh, I thought I had a killer shot and, uh, I had some time to kill. So I was like, why don't I just ride around the building just to, just to make sure. And when I got around to the other side of the building, I was like, well, that, you know, the other shot is probably one that I'll immediately delete off the camera, mm -hmm. uh, because this one's way better. And, you know, I could have just thought I had a killer shot and just sat in the car and waited, but I took the time to, to kind of explore and make sure I had a good, good shot. Um, and then, you know, another one is, is, is simple as, uh, as, oh, I just lost it. <laughs> no, cause I was thinking, I was thinking of the, now I was thinking of the five editings that I was going to do. Um, <laughs> uh, just the settings. Uh, I, I, I kind of gave a little thing in my podcast where, um, when it comes to the real estate stuff or pretty much anything in, in particular, any, in, in general, I will, I'll set my camera to, to aperture priority, uh, lowest ISO I can go without, you know, having camera shake and, uh, change the aperture to, you know, depending on the scene or whatever, it's a portrait or whatever, I'll go low aperture or whatever, but I'll stick at those, I'll stick at those settings. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that'll look at the back of the camera and, oh, okay, I got light coming in from here and then here I need to make sure that I got you know, this thing, I, I don't, I don't really do that. So the, the main reason I talked about that was just because, I mean, the settings matter, but they don't matter as much as a lot of people think they matter. Yeah. I feel like, I feel kind of like you're, you're taking a picture and, and it's kind of, um, kind of the, the metaphor I use is picture is someone who's painting something, they trace something on the canvas. You know, that's the okay. picture you're taking. When you put the picture in Photoshop or Lightroom, that's the paint that's going on the canvas. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of how I picture it. All right, you you passed that test. So now, <laughs> now now comes the next one, and I couldn't find it on because I think it's, this is a while back, and I I didn't want to have I want to scroll through all because you have so much stuff here. Um, but I'm going to ask you another one. And remember okay. remember you're on JPEG to RAW. Okay. Um, <laughs> when is the right time to shoot JPEG? You did a video on that. When is the right time to shoot JPEG? I think I may be paraphrasing. I may not be saying it exactly right. If it's if it's the one I'm thinking about, I I did I did say that sometimes I shoot JPEG if I don't want to edit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I remember you start off with was the right time to shoot JPEG oh, oh, is I, is never. I, I, yeah, I, I did I did never. All right, thanks guys for joining me in this. <laughs> yeah, it was a short show and I'm over. Yeah, but then you went on to then you went on to explain that our times. Yeah, yeah there are some times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not a we're not a show where it's you can never shoot JPEG. That's yeah. not what that's not what it's meant. Well, the, one one thing that I, uh, I I probably shouldn't say, but uh, for my work, if I'm if I'm shooting pictures of of stuff around the office because I'm I'm the the company camera guy basically. Mm -hmm. So if we ever have like events at work where it's like a party or you know people are coming in and they need some photos of people or something, um, I'll take the photos. But unfortunately, I have um, I have an older version of Adobe Photoshop. I have CS5. Okay. And CS5 doesn't support RAW files for my 6D. There you go. <laughs> um, but I have it at work, and I don't want to bother bother my company just to say, "Hey, can you get me a subscription?" Yeah. Uh, because I've already maxed out my personal subscription, so I don't want to, you know, 
right. I don't want to mess mess it up with. So I'll most of the time, well, actually all the time, I'll shoot JPEG for them and do as much editing as I can in uh, in Photoshop uh, using the JPEGs. Yeah. Um, but those aren't, you know, those aren't anything professional or anything. It's just snapshots basically. So. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, there are times to shoot JPEG. Uh, I ran into it when I was shooting, uh, what was it gymnastics, not gymnastics, um, cheerleading. And mm-hmm. I, you know, you had, I remember on one of your posts, you said always show up early or something like that. Yeah. And, and when I shoot sports, that's my, that's my thought with really anything come early. So if I'm shooting, I was shooting, um, gym, no, what'd I say? Cheerleading. I shoot okay. cheerleading for a friend. So this wasn't even a money. This wasn't even a, a paid thing. It was just for friends. And I showed up two or three events before their event because I wanted to practice. And the, the girls come out there on the, on the stage or whatever they're on. And I start shooting away. And I'm going to try and get coverage of the whole group. And they're, one, they're moving incredibly fast, flying mm-hmm. all over the place. And they're literally out there for less than two minutes. Within oh, the... Wow. Within the first 20 to 30 seconds, I had max out the buffer on my card. And, <laughs> and now, and I think I, at the time I was shooting um, a D2X maybe, or maybe a, no, a D70 um, or D700, mm-hmm. whatever it was. I don't remember. Um, but I maxed out the buffer because I was shooting raw. And I had, by the time it finished, their part was over. Oh, and I said, well, there you go. That's why you show up early is because now I know I can't shoot raw. <laughs> I have to shoot JPEG for this. <laughs> uh, you know, a modern camera, one of the ones that are out today, like the D500 on the Nikon side, it probably could keep up with that even in raw. But, you know, you got to know your gear and, you, you know, showing up early, like you had mentioned in your, in your blog post, uh, you, can, you can find different angles or find, uh, identify problems and find ways around them. Yeah, I, I always try to get get there as early as possible. Um, yeah, I I would rather get there early than have to rush. Exactly. Uh, so so I would always get there early and and I I mainly kind of go like two passes over like real estate stuff. Like I'll do a quick, you know, get a, a camera or a photo from this corner, this corner, and then move on. And then I'll I'll do a whole walk through the house again. And I feel like if I didn't get there early, I wouldn't have time to do that walk through. So. Yeah. Right. I mentioned in the first part of the show, A.D. Wheeler, who had a drone video of a um, Star Wars reenactment. Uh, I know we have, we've had another guy, and it's in our Facebook group, who is now using his drone for his re- real estate business. He's out in Arizona, mm-hmm. and he's using a drone for his real estate business. Do you see, any, see anything in the future coming where you incorporate a drone in the videos or photos from that drone? Most definitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, with, uh, with that, I'm trying to, I'm trying to save up for certain things cause it, I, I don't want to, I'm a big do it for cash kind of guy. Yeah. So I'm waiting for my company to build up enough cash to buy, you know, a drone. Absolutely. Um, but I am also wanting or needing actually, I think I need it, uh, is a new computer. Okay. Uh, so my first purchase will be a new computer because I'm already kind of maxing out this one. Um, but then after that will be, will be a drone and I will offer that as a service, uh, just because I, I don't think you can get any better with, with drone, uh, photography and stuff like that. I think it's amazing. Yeah. I feel, uh, at least for me, real estate has, is a new emerging, uh, avenue for photographers to make money that, you know, it's a market where there's, there's. Not as maybe as stiff a competition as there is in weddings and maybe not as much opportunity just yet, but I feel that there's a lot of growth that can happen there. And maybe it's spotty all over the country, but I, I feel like that's a great market. And adding a drone to it is now a whole other thing that sets you apart from other people. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things that I, I want to do. I just need to find the right client. Right. Um, because I, one thing I want to do is obviously take photos of the place, but I also want to do a, a video walkthrough, but not your traditional hold the camera right here and do, a, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure you guys have seen, uh, Dom Bauer on YouTube. I think so. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's a real estate photographer, but he lives, I can't remember exactly where he lives over the pond. Um, but he lives over there and he, uh, he, he does real estate photography for his daytime job. Um, but he also takes video while he's there Yeah. and I see his video and it's, you know, it's, it's good video, but I want to get into doing that. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think the, I did one as a test one 
and it was uh, at a beach house that we were staying in. Uh, and I thought, hey, why don't I just send the realty company uh, this beach house, you know, to so if they want to put it on their site, they can do it. So um, before we left for to to leave the beach house, got it all cleaned up and everything. And I did a video walkthrough with my cam slider. I got a, a, a oh, I think nice. it's a forty two inch slider. Uh, I did that. I did a whole bunch of angles and uh, I got video earlier in the week of of the beach and stuff like that. So I put it all into a video and sent it over to him. And all they said was thanks, which is fine because, I, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of fun to do that. And that made me want to to try to offer that in the future. But, you know, f- shooting a ninety nine thousand dollar condo or home or whatever is not going to. Yeah. Not going to want that. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and not everybody's always going to understand the value of what they see. So, you do all that work and, you know, you don't get the response maybe you wanted to. And it, it could just be that person or yeah. that thing that they're selling. You know, they just don't understand the value of what you did. But, you know, as long as you don't have to do it all the time and get nothing for it, I think, you right. know, doing some of those things gets you experience and, and helps you grow. And then, um, you know, some at some point it will click and you'll get the right customer and house they're selling that they'll be willing to pay yeah. for that. Yeah, I think I got to I got to hit up some of those uh, real estate agents that have those million dollar homes yeah. that's been sitting on the market for two <laughs> years and just see if I can go in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I can was, help you. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, we, we did a show, I think it was 126 with Randy Henderson. It was a real estate show that was very popular. What mm-hmm. I think would be interesting um, is sometime to have a few of our real estate, because since that show, I've come to know other real estate photographers. And it'd be interesting to do like a round table where, you know, I just kind of host the show and you guys talk. Cause I think it, just I think, let us talk, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I, I, you know, I don't know how much value I could add to it, but I know from that one show, there's lots of people who are interested and in, it's a lot of good information. And I'm sure that, you know, your knowledge and Randy's knowledge, and I'm thinking it's like Stephen Miller's knowledge and, and, and mm-hmm. Nikki, uh, all those people that, you know, y'all, it would be an incredible to just sit back and listen to you guys talk. I think that, that would be amazing. Yeah. I, I think, I think not only would the, you know, listen to the podcast, learn something, I would definitely learn something too. I think we would all, absolutely, all yeah. take something from that. Cause right, you know, by sharing something that, wow, I didn't think of that. And, well, it one, would help everybody. one, all four of the people I just mentioned, or did I mention five? Four or five people. Uh, mm-hmm. All of the ones I just mentioned are in different markets. So right there, you got differences. You know. The, oh yeah, there you go. You, and Stephen's uh, market in in uh, Arizona, your market in the Carolinas, Nikki's in Ohio, and I forget where Randy's at, but his all of them are different markets, maybe with different price houses. Um, I know Stephen at first was having trouble because. He was shooting the lower end valued houses and, you know, people aren't willing to pay quite as much for those photos. Yeah. But uh, um, from what I'm seeing of his photos now, I think he's figured something out. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear that. And you all have solved your problems in different ways. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I think it's that would be a really good thing. I think it because because real estate photography is it. it, I mean, anybody could really get into it. you know, I, I, I was lucky enough to have a empty, empty places I could shoot, you know, um, there's a, there's actually one guy who's a really, uh, he's actually really, really good who listens to my, uh, my podcast. I'm not sure if he, um, uh, is listening to this. I put out a thing saying this was live, but, um, but his name is Mike Davis and he posts, uh, images of his stuff on, uh, my picture monk nation, Facebook page. Okay. And, uh, he posts his stuff and his stuff is great. I, I love his stuff. So, uh, and he's, he's another guy. I'm not positive whether he does his full time. Um, but it's, it's really good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, before we head into the end, I wanted to ask you this question because, you know, we went over a lot of stuff that you're doing, the, the picture monk, the, the, the landscape photography, the real estate photography, all those could be in them of themselves, you know, right. absorb, <laughs> absorb all your free time. And you also have the day job. How are you balancing? Cause I, I, I remember right. You do have a family also, right? Yes. How yeah, are you balancing a, all that? I have not a 15 a, month old. <laughs> uh, well, maybe that's how you're balancing it. <laughs> They're still young. They don't want your time yet. <laughs> uh, or honey, I'll see you Thursday. 
<laughs> that's that's kind of how it is. Um, so yeah, I got my nine to five, and it, I, I probably shouldn't admit this on live internet somewhere, but <laughs> most of the time when I'm at work, I'm doing work, but I'm also thinking about what I can do sure. for my real my 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 hobby, I mm-hmm. guess you would <laughs> still call it, or my uh, my picture monk stuff or or whatever. You know, I, it, 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 luckily if they see me doing something on my computer, it kind of looks like I'm doing something for them anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that kind of meshes together. And then at five, I get off of work and try to spend some time with my family, see my kid. And, uh, he's, he's actually really good that he goes to bed at around six thirty or seven. Oh, awesome. Wow. Um, and he's, he sleeps through the night. So from six thirty or seven, me and the wife have some time to watch TV and stuff. Uh, and then I'm usually doing picture monk stuff and, and real estate stuff. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is I'm making YouTube videos for another YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm doing those videos too and still doing all the other th- stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it takes up a lot of time, but I, you know, I somehow find the time to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome that you're able to balance all that. You know, um, as we're heading in, we're actually got like, we're heading into the last part of the show here. It's already passed by. And I'm looking at my list of questions. I'm not going to be able to get through all of them. So before we head into the last segment, Jordan, I do want to mention a couple of things. I showed this a minute ago uh, when Jordan yep. was talking about uh, his Lightroom or his Photoshop. This is one of the gifts that we're going to give away with our end of the year photo contest. We do a photo contest at the end of the year, Jordan, in December, mm-hmm. which is like your best photo of the year. So oh, great. the monthly contest is sometimes themed, sometimes open, anything you want. But the year in December one is always open. And, you, you know, any image that you took that is your, your well, what you say is your best image you took during the year is what you can submit. And this will be one of the gifts. We usually also give away Amazon gift cards and, and we have other photographers donate stuff. So be on the lookout for this. Be getting ready for that December contest. I'll be posting some stuff out there. But what makes all this possible is where's my link, Tim? <laughs> and don't laugh, Tim. And I'll <laughs> uh, don't do it, Mike. There's the link. <laughs> don't use it right now. I got to fix something that's broken right now. But <laughs> it's the jpegderaw.com slash Amazon. If you're gonna buy, like Tim had to buy a new webcam because his kept breaking last week. If you're going to buy a new webcam, use our link before you go there. We get a small credit. All those credits, all those small credits we use to buy things like this. Tim and I don't do this for money. Uh, we'll use 100%, actually a little bit more than 100% of those proceeds to, to buy and give away things. Because, you know, like Jordan, you were just saying, you know, you got all, as a photographer, whether you're in it for business or you're whether you're in it for hobby, you have all these things that are, that are demanding your money. You've got, yeah. you need, you know, now you think about a drone. I need a drone uh, to, for this business. I need lenses and camera and memory cards and, and a computer. And there's so many things, if this is a hobby or a business, so many things that are just drawn and wanting your money. So we do whatever little we can uh, to help give back by doing things like giving this away. This is a one year, in case you're wondering. So one year prepaid Adobe Creative Cloud plan with Photoshop and Lightroom. So you get it for 12 months. After the 12 months, you either let it die or you renew it and <laughs> keep let going. <laughs> <laughs> and keep going. So remember that link. We'd love to have you join us in the Facebook group because if you want to join the year-end photo contest or the monthly photo contest, you can do it through our website, jpedderball.com. There's a, a way to submit your photos through there. But the easiest way is on our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash JPEG to raw. And in case you missed any of this or you want, you know, you want to rewatch it, um, this show is recorded and is put out on YouTube, Stitcher. Where's my link? I'm going to forget all this. For video, it's on YouTube, iTunes, and Vimeo. For audio, it's on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Podomatic, Podbean, and Google Play Music. And of course, as I showed at the beginning, it's also available on the JPEG to Raw app, which is what I use. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to subscribe. <laughs> All right, with that, Jordan, the segment we do um, each show now and where we talk about what's in your camera bag. 
So if you wouldn't mind sharing with us, what is in your camera bag? Yeah. Uh, so I think I mentioned it a couple of times. I have yeah. a Canon 6D and that is, uh, that's my main shooter. Um, and, uh, that's, that's, I think it's the perfect camera for me. Uh, I, I don't, and that's That's just coming from somebody who had a Canon 5D for, or a, a 5D mark. No, Canon T2i for six years. Uh, but I love that. I love that camera. Great purchase for me. Um, I also have the 24 to 105 F4. Uh, that's the one that came with the camera, which I guess people would can still, still consider it a kit lens, but I don't know. I don't know why anybody has anything bad to say about kit lenses sometimes. Um, <laughs> and then I got, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, 17 to 40 wide angle. That's the, that's the main camera lens that I use. Uh, there was a, a cheap lens that I found for sale on eBay and I'm actually going to show it here just because it's probably one of the crappiest looking little camera lenses. It's the, uh, 75 to 300 F4 to 5.6. Um, wow. it's not sharp whatsoever, but I still love it just in, nas- in case I need to get long range. <laughs> and then I got my little nifty 50, yeah. um, you know, gotta have those little things. Um, so that's the, that's all my gear for, for that stuff. And I still have stuff that I keep in my camera bag all the time. Uh, I got my GoPro session that I do a lot of video on. Um, I still love that little camera. GoPro um, session. What is, what is the that? GoPro Hero session. It's the, uh, little square one. Okay. Uh, I, if I had it here, I'd show you, but I don't have it with me. Is that different oh, from here the hero? Is. Here you go. Oh, well, I don't know if you can see it. I, oh, I actually, you, you froze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll keep it on my desk just okay. when I get back. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's the GoPro. It's, it's the little square one that came out with a couple of years ago, I think. Oh, okay. I, I don't think I've ever, I just looked it up and I don't think I've ever seen this one. It's completely really? different, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a cube. It's basically a small cube. Yeah, I'll throw it in uh in chat with heck is that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going I'm looking it up now too. Yeah, I I've never seen that one before. So now is this not waterproof like the other ones? No, it's waterproof. It you don't need a housing. It's just that's how it is and it's uh So it's it's, it's the GoPro without a housing, I guess. It's yeah. the GoPro without a housing but still waterproof. Huh, I've never, never seen that. Yeah. Now, what do you, what do you thing. use this for? Uh, if I'm doing, cause I've, I've done real estate vlogs, a couple of them where I'll, I'll show that I'm, you know, going out to shoot this place and I'll, I'll pop this on top of my, my camera and get a, you know, first person view of what I'm shooting. Um, I'll mount this in the car. Uh, I'll put it on a selfie stick and walk around and talk to the camera. Kind of like, you know, like a real vlog. Um, uh, I, I just love the little thing. Uh, huh. it's, I'm, and mainly if I'm doing quick little video, it's either on this, uh, and if I don't have this with me by chance, then I'm doing it on the iPhone. I had so, never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that little thing. It's I think it's 200 bucks, and they're actually coming out with another one, another version 2 or something. Yeah. Uh, $199.99, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty good little camera. Interesting. Uh, so I always keep that with me uh, in my camera bag. And uh, some of the other stuff I keep in there, I got a YN five sixty two flash unit that I keep in there all the time, okay. and uh, pop that out when I need to. But uh, my my actual gear is actually pretty slim. I know a lot of people who have gone to the the wagon wagon. How do you say that? The flash the that you have YN five sixty. The young no. Young yeah, no. yeah. So versus the Canon or the Nikon, you know, name brand. You know, those mm-hmm. lenses, they may not have all the features, but, you know, pretty close. And they're quite a bit cheaper. I love, I love the, uh, the, the YN560. I think it's a great flash. It's, it's 50, 60 bucks, something like that. Um, I love that. And I keep that all the time. It's a perfect little manual flash. And, you know, the lenses are somewhat low price, so I can afford to get some other small, yeah, small yeah. things like that. So it's so nothing like a tampon or anything in there? No, not really. <laughs> Tim's wondering maybe, what on earth, maybe, Mike. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe like, maybe like an emergency bag of Skittles or something. But that's a, that's other than that. I don't know you, do you don't remember that show? Uh, yeah, I, I remember. It, yes, <laughs> and I, I, I don't remember. You know, say I don't remember what I use it for. But yes, I do absolutely remember it. It was uh, Corey from uh, Photo Stealers, 
And she brought that up. And of course, Tim and I both thought, okay, you know, we understand what they're used for. And she goes, no, it's not for that. It's, you know, it's a sterile product in case you have some, like a cut or something, and you need to use it for something. It's slim, it's, it's, it keeps in there, and, and she does that. And I said, yeah, I've never considered nope. carrying that in my bag. Never, it never, never even cro- crossed my mind. Never <laughs> even crossed my mind, not once. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I thought, but you know, okay, I can see, yeah, you know, I see your point and why you would want to do that. <laughs> um, all right, uh, anything else? Any tri? What about tripod? Oh, tripod. Yeah, I got a. I got a. Actually, I'm, a lot of people are going to say, "Why does he have this?" But it's actually an Amazon Basics tripod. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and the ball head that came with it. Uh yeah yeah. yeah. But uh, but uh, it seems weird to say that, but that's what I use most of the time. But my uh, camera slider um, has uh, probably like a three hundred dollar ball head on it. I can't remember yeah. the brand name, but that's got a ball head on it, a really nice ball head on it. But um, I'm not in like super windy conditions when I'm photographing stuff normally. So so a little tripod, Amazon Basics tripod, is perfect for me. Well, and you know, unless you're getting some of the real long lenses where they're, you know, the heavy and stuff like that, a wide angle lens, it doesn't have to have quite as big of a, a hefty as a, a tripod. So yeah, you know, and I do have a, I do have an adapter ring uh, that goes. It's that I don't, I don't remember the brand name either on that one, but it goes over the lens, mm-hmm. um, and you mount it through, you know, on the lens instead of on the uh, uh, the tripod mount. So right, if right. I ever, if it ever starts dipping, then, <laughs> I think then I'll put it that you, way. I don't know if you can see it behind me right here. Is, yep. is my, I have a Nikon D700 and it's got, it, the one that's on there right now is a 70 to 200. And it has the collar lens on that. I think mm-hmm. it's built into the 70 to 200. Yeah. Um, and I use uh, really, really right stuff. The, the connector, the quick release yeah. thing and the ball head. And, and I think that's a tripod from there. Um, you can spend a lot of money on a tripod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I go for the Amazon Basics. <laughs> and the sad, the sad thing the is, that's a very expensive tripod. I think the tripod was probably four fifty, and the ball head was probably five hundred. And you know where it sits almost all the time? Right there. Right, right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Because what I take with me, because that thing's crazy heavy. Even though it's carbon fiber, that setup is is too heavy. So what I do is I take my, uh, I don't remember the name of it. I don't know what it is, but I take I take a, a smaller, lighter tripod and I leave it in my truck. So it's the one I use all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's smart. Yeah. Well, Jordan, anything else? Uh, no, I mean okay. I, I got a bunch of knickknack stuff. Usually, it's I mean I, I got a monopod back there. That's usually what I'll do if I uh, if I'm taking the a front of a, a front of a home. Uh, I'll hoist it up in the air and uh, try to get a different angle that way. Um. And some of the stuff you can't put in a bag, like when you bring a ladder, you got to stick that in the back of the car. Yeah, I actually borrowed a ladder from my dad who uh, had a, I think it was a 10-foot ladder, yeah. <laughs> threw that in the car. Um, I think I made a, a, a video blog about that you one did. as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do I a little bit of one. research. I bet you do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did I did that one as well, and that was uh, that was kind of fun to do that because I, I wanted to get the whole area. Yeah. Um, and get above above everything. So that was the only way to do it, really. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jordan, for sharing that with us. Yep. Um, all right. So what what do you want to do next? What are your goals? Let's say I don't want to put a time limit on it, but where do you see your photography heading over the, in the future? Uh, just advancing advancing what I'm doing. I like I like even though I've got a lot going on, I still like all that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just kind of want to keep it going. Um, I. As far as the real estate stuff, I know that's going to eventually come because it's it's all word of mouth sure. pretty much. Uh, so that'll eventually come. I can still be a better salesman like we were talking about earlier. Um, but uh, but I want to keep that going the way it is. And and uh, the picture monk stuff, I just I have fun doing that. Um, I I kind of feel like you guys do. You guys don't do this for money. Yeah. Um, you know the picture monk stuff is just kind of something fun to do. Um, and, uh, I kind of want to just get more people to, to listen and see some of that stuff there. Um, and that's pretty much it. If, if, if I had to, if I had to change one thing, it would probably be not making the videos for the other YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, because, uh, because that does eat into my time, uh, more than, more than the other stuff. So I'd rather take that away and, and focus more, but right. 
Well, uh, and if if you haven't checked out his his picture mock or his or, you know his professional page, uh, go check it out. You definitely can tell that you have a graphics background. I mean, your graphics are so much better than than mine. You can tell that I have, you can tell that I have an accounting background. I should just put numbers up there. Um, but you know, your intro to your podcast, your your graphics on your site, they're all professional looking and well done. So if you yeah, haven't, that's what I hope for. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't checked out his, his site or his or his show, go check it out on his website, PitcherMonk.com, or uh, and you have all your links there to your Facebook, to your Twitter, to your Google Plus and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. Yep. But along those lines, what is the best place if somebody wants to get in touch with you? Uh, what is the best place to get in touch with you? Uh, in, any, any place I got everything coming to me. So, <laughs> uh, ma- mainly I'm more, uh, as far as like social media and stuff, I'm more active on Instagram. Okay. Uh, just because I like Instagram way more than Facebook, uh, way more than Twitter. Um, I, I, I just prefer Instagram just cause it's still words, but it's more visual. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like doing that kind of thing. Um, but I mean, hit me up at the picture monk side. I can definitely be reached there. Um, normally not, not many people contact me that are listeners of anything to the, uh, the portfolio website. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm more active on Instagram and, uh, I, I do, I do want people, I know you, uh, promoted your, your group page, but I also have a group page where I just want people just to come together and talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the, that's the picture monk nation, fa- uh, Facebook group page. Um, and, uh, I think it's, uh, if if you want to go to uh, an easy way to get there is just picturemonk.com slash nation and that'll redirect to um to Facebook. Nation. But uh I got a couple a couple good good guys there that are 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 really good at photography and we all just post images and, and talk together and stuff like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah there we go. I'm not a member of the group. You want me to join? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's pending. I hope you let me in. Oh, I just got your notification. Yeah, I'll let you in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank so, you. For, so, thank yeah, you. I, I, I really like people to join that page just because I, I want people to post images all the time. Sure. Uh, I, I could probably do better at posting my own images there, but um, but I just like seeing other people's work and, you know, getting influenced by that that type of stuff. Yeah. Do you have anything that would you would say is on your photography bucket list, like, you know, things that – Hey, I'd really love to be able to do this someday. Uh, whew, yeah, I do. Um, one, of, I actually have two, and it one of them is it. It really would take like an hour for me to do it, and then I can just mark it off. But then another one is actually going to Hawaii, um, uh, because uh, the Keck Observatory is in Hawaii, okay. um, and I really, really, really want to photograph uh, the night sky at the Keck Observatory. Um, I, that's, that's a dream of mine. I got to do it sometimes. Uh, so I, I want to get out there and do that. But the, the one that takes about an hour is there's actually a building. Um, uh, the business actually starts with a Q and it's about an hour and a half away from me. And I want to take a picture of that building at sunset. Okay. Um, but I got, I don't ever get out there and do that. (laughs) That's a, that's a, that's a small bucket list, but I want to do that. (laughs) I don't know how you have time to get out and shoot at all. This show has absorbed all my free time and I don't get to shoot hardly at all. I, I, I need to to get out and do that because I have one, a bucket list item that is literally just like Kathleen was a mile away from me. It's literally a mile away from me. Now I have to catch it at the right time because I want to catch a certain mood sky and, and, um, and some other things happening. So I'm going to have to probably sit there for multiple days, <laughs> not, not at a time, but <laughs> yeah. pick the right time, go there and then keep doing that until the event happens to do it. But, you know, I've been in this town for a long time and have not made the effort once yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I was saying with my, my dad and I, we'll go out and take photos. Um, you know, we'll, we'll drive around and take photos, but it takes us probably an hour and a half to two hours to get out of the area of where we've already shot. And so we'll we'll have to plan trips around that, but we haven't we haven't done it in a while, so we need to get back on that. But um, you know that's kind of uh, that's kind of our thing, uh, just trying to find places that we haven't shot, which it's slim pickings around here. Yeah. Well, Jordan, uh, thank you for coming out with us tonight. Yep. And, and being yeah, a guest on the show. Yep. 
And if you showed up late, again, I record this and you will know, be available in all our, our areas. Like I see AD just showed up. So <laughs> AD, I recorded this just for you. You can catch it later on <laughs> um, out there on our YouTube channel and on iTunes and, and all the other places. Um, so until next week, keep it raw. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.